30 minutes of seated bike complete. Really not that much of a challenge. I don't, I, I can't sympathize with the cardio hate, but I'm in a little bit of a rush because I've got to go to the machine shop for my, uh, for my senior design project and go work on our, uh, our pelletizer, if you know what I'm talking about there. But let's just give a quick little unpumped check-in, see if everything's still matching up to what I would hope to see. Yeah. Not too shabby. Oh my goodness. And then now just the back and we can get out of here. All right, let's jump to meal number one. So far, I haven't eaten any of it, which I don't see as a problem. You know, for one thing, now that I can do this little post-cardio pose down, since I haven't eaten, my stomach is a little bit flatter, so I do just look kind of cooler. But it delays my calorie intake for the day. I don't think it's going to hurt you to wait until noon to have your first meal and if you do so then you've almost shortened your eating window so once you do start eating you can kind of eat bigger meals closer together there's just a little bit of a uh, barrier of entry that you know you kind of want to wait for when you wake up till you know midday ish but pretty you done let's uh let's see what we eat first meeting is complete I didn't really, all I had to do was kind of sit around. I was a little bit more on the actual fabrication side of our little thing. So we were watching one of our guys, uh, Shoe How. He was wiring this thing up like a goddamn electrician. But post-cardio, went home, took a shower, got on the bike over here. So if you're ever in a fucking, I don't even want to say rush. Like, that's not the right word. But... If you've got to be somewhere for a reasonable amount of time and you don't have prepped meals already ready, then I will say this is not even just a dieting meal. Cause like, I mean, this isn't like zero carb. This whole thing is two scoops of protein powder and then two packets of, um, strawberry flavored oatmeal just kind of mixed together. So this is 50 grams protein. I think five-ish of fat, maybe six, and then about 45 grams of carbs. I, I may be wrong with those numbers. I forget when I tracked them, but 50, it's like a 450 calorie shake. So definitely a meal. I would not count this as just a little drink. Like this counts. And dieting wise, it definitely fucking counts. So if you eat in 2,500 calories worth of real food, and then you add a shake on top of it, I'm not going to say that a protein powder shake is as good as like sitting and eating a steak in terms of the protein quality as well as the nutrients and everything else. But I think protein powder has a place, especially for situations like this where you kind of want to have something ready to go. So usually, actually when I was in high school, I used to make a few of these dry. You know, I leave the shaker cup in my, in my backpack and then throughout the day, usually twice, once between getting to school and lunch, and then once between lunch and before I left. Because if you're going to school, if you're a high school dude watching this, and you're trying to bulk up, if, fuck, the time period between school starting and lunch, what is that, fucking five hours? And more likely than not, you didn't really eat your breakfast before an hour, or in, an hour before school started. So dude, you're fucking, that's a five hour gap of food middle of the day where you just haven't eaten anything unless you've got like a snack or something with you so 
in terms of the protein shakes, I find they're most beneficial just because they're fucking, it may as well be a goddamn MRE. I can have a Ziploc bag with two scoops of protein powder and then two of these oatmeal packets in my backpack at all fucking times. And anytime I'm like, oh shit, okay, I got to eat something. Bust it out, put it in a shaker. Fucking, even if you don't have a shaker cup, I've been sipping on the Diet Pepsi this whole time. I can empty this out, rinse it out, pour it in here. That's 450 calories. Now, in a bulking context, that's 450 calories, which go down pretty easy. Dieting down, I would not want all my meals to look like this, just because, I mean, you gotta remember, this is, with the oatmeal, it makes this a little bit satiating. You know, I'm actually eating something, but usually a protein shake is not going to actually fill you up. All you're doing is drinking your calories, which typically I would advise against. But the fact that the oatmeal packets are added in here, and those are actual food, that will make me feel like I actually did just eat something. So everybody's gone now. I'm just fucking loitering in here. But one tip, if you want to kind of recreate this, is... You kind of have to constantly shake it up. And this isn't like super complicated, but the oatmeal, it, it doesn't just float around. It's going to sink down to the bottom and kind of settle. Like I, I can watch it right now on the side. So as you're drinking it, if I were to just start sipping it right now, all I'd be drinking is the fucking protein powder part. And the oatmeal would just sit down here in a blob. So you kind of have to go back and forth between shaking it up to get everything evenly dispersed and then having a sip. Probably not a bad idea to let it sit for a little while. Because if you're just, <laughs> if you made the shake, you shook it up for like three seconds and then you tried to drink it, the oatmeal wouldn't have absorbed any fucking water and it would just be like super dry. You know, so this is kind of taking the, taking some inspiration from like overnight oats, but a little bit more, let's just say on a little bit shorter of a time frame. But this will put me at about, yeah, maybe f a little less than 40. No, no, a little less than a fifth of my daily calories. So I've got another 200 grams of protein for the day. Another, I think, 200 grams of carbs and like 50 more grams of fat. So set myself up for success, of course. But let's cut to, well, let's go home and cut to whatever I eat next. I I really could not tell you. I don't know what I have in the kitchen. Lo and behold, the lifter's equivalent of surf and turf. Now, the turf side, apart from... Yeah, I mean, I, I totally burned it. But not because I, like, smacked on the highest heat possible. Every time, you know, and I tell myself this every time. Anytime I try to add anything fancy seasoning wise, like with steak seasonings or rubs or whatever, as soon as I put it on something and then throw it in the pan, after like two flips, the fuckers just burnt because the onions just fucking blow up in the oil. Every time I do salt and pepper, it's perfect. But I get, I get like curious. I'm like, would it be better if I made it a little fancier? But, uh, but either way, half pound of, um, I forget the cut. I don't know, kind of fatty. Three torn up low carb tortillas. This is actually a big chunk of this meal in terms of the volume. Like when I eat this part, I am actually going to be like filling up my stomach a little bit. <laughs> um, and then like three ounces of tuna just from the Kroger sushi aisle. I'm, I didn't grab this because I thought, okay, I want some good omega threes. Really, I mean, the macros on these ones are nuts. There's no rice. All that's underneath of this is like cucumber and carrots. Three and a half grams of fat, no carbs, 17 grams of protein. I mean, it's a fucking no-brainer. So net so far, actually, I may as well just pull up the fucking, um, pull this guy up. So, yeah, after that first shake, 
I was at 440-ish calories, and now I'm at 1,025 after I eat all this. So I'm on track, man. Meal number two was only just about 500 calories, which is a pretty, that's pretty manageable for dieting. Like for me to have 500 calories evenly dispersed between fats, carbs, and proteins, that is substantial enough for me to not need to go out and eat anything else for another two-ish hours. And, you know, depending on your schedule, your appetite, 500 calories can fucking hold you over for a little while. So coupled with this is a, a two liter of Sprite Zero, the likes of which I just like as a fucking treat. Mm -mm. So what's the point? Why drink a soda at all? Doesn't soda dehydrate you? You guys are nuts. I mean, if you're, if you can just drink a gallon of water straight a day and that's your thing, go for it. I'm not going to knock you. Maybe that's even fucking better. But for me, man, I mean, just having a sweeter drink or something, maybe it's just because I have a sweet tooth, but it kind of just incentivizes me to drink more. I mean, if I was just sitting here doing whatever kind of computer work I've got to do later, this two liter is going to disappear. It's just going to fucking go like that. And having a jug of water next to you when you're doing busy work or just sitting around in a dieting context, I think it is going to make you a little bit less compelled to just want to snack on something or go to the kitchen and just look around and like, oh, there's a couple of fucking, there's a few, oh, there's a bag of chips, all those scrap. Like every time you do that, that's calories being just thrown onto the pile of your caloric intake for the day. And odds are after a few little, you know, kitchen trips where you just snack around, fuck man, that could add up to 500 calories. That could be a whole meal. So you could think you're in a deficit, but if you're not really stringent with your tracking, you could get to the point where you're literally fucking eating an extra meal than you usually would, at least in terms of calorie fucking intake. And just random ass snacks that you don't even really, that you're not even really hungry for. You know, you're just kind of bored. So having a little drink of something sweet to sip on, I've always found that it's worked out pretty well. Cool. Come on. <laughs> I would be in the kitchen, but my, uh, my roommate's down there on a call. So I'll just fucking hang out up here. But which one of these meals so far has been what you would conventionally say is like a bodybuilding dieting meal? You know, I'm not sitting here eating a blend, eating like a shake of like a tomato and an onion and fucking apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Like this is all just fucking normal ass food, you know, this a steak and the tortillas. That's just a meal that I might eat regularly bulking up. I might be a little more, more generous with the the cut of steak that I eat. And, you know, I've got more room for fats. And the tortillas, of course, would be full carb, not this sort of fibery keto tortilla. I mean, these only have two grams of digestible carbs in them each. And I saw a few comments asking about that, so I guess it is worth mentioning. When you look at the label, at least in the States, when you look at a nutrition label, when, you know, protein right there, fats right there, and the fats gets broken down like, okay, saturated, unsaturated, trans fats, same thing with carbs, you know, total carbohydrate, and underneath is two subsections, right? There's um, you know, net carbs, and then there's soluble and insoluble fiber. Sometimes they'll add sugar, but sugar and net carbs, that's, that's like the total. But whenever you see insoluble fiber, and it'll say it, however many grams of insoluble fiber there are per serving, those carbs do not count because those are not digestible. You know, like a fucking, you know, a cow can eat grass and a horse can eat hay because they have multiple fucking stomachs and their stomachs are designed to break down those really long strands of um, cellulose, right? But if, if you... <laughs> 
if you had a fucking stack of hay and that was all you got to eat, guess what, man? You're going to fucking croak in no time because you can't digest the insoluble fiber that's in that. And when it's made in a special way in like food laboratories or whatever else, because I don't think you could, I don't think you could make a low carb tortilla as good as this just in your kitchen. But, you know, when they combine certain like wheat extracts where it's only the fiber content, you know, they can make a pretty appetizing fucking tortilla. Like, if you gave this to somebody, they'd have no idea that it was any different than normal. It is maybe a little bit tougher, but like that's, that's just a marginal change. And it's going from 20 grams of carbs per tortilla. So that's fucking, that's 80 calories right there. Three of them, that's 250 calories. That's half the value of this whole meal in just fucking carbs alone. So adding these calorie smart options can really roll back time in terms of how much food you've really eaten. Because I could sit here and add an extra 200 fucking calories to this meal just by swapping out these tortillas with full flour ones. Or, you know, maybe I can add like a sauce with the steak, like a full fat buffalo or something. If, um, if you're not such a good chef, you know, sauces like that are going to make your food a little bit more appetizing, like things like that kind of take it away. Just a few key components, which have a ton of fucking calories inside them. You're going to set yourself up to be able to eat less food, but actually feel fuller, you know? So that's always been the name of the game in my mind when it comes to dieting. Like in terms of size and how full I'm going to feel just from eating this, this is about what I'd expect from something I'd want to eat when I'm bulking up. But it's just a bit lower calorie wise. It's not so calorie dense. So I can make it another few hours after only eating a 500 calorie meal ish. This is actually 550. The shake was 440. But plan is to uh, sit here, play on TikTok for a minute. This will all disappear reasonably quick. Uh, one little tip if you actually do end up doing a legit diet. Maybe don't scarf down your food in three seconds. Because then you give yourself no time to enjoy it. And <laughs> you're just fast tracking the process of, okay, I'm hungry again. So whenever I'm bulking up, I really kind of sit down like I'm straight out of Gen Pop. And I'm... Like just chowing down as quick as I can because in a bulking context, you know, I want to eat as much food as quick as possible so I don't feel full and I have trouble with it to the point where sometimes I'll even put my phone away just so I can actually focus on sitting here and eating the whole food or eating the whole bowl or whatever, like rice or steak and chicken or like if I got a crazy Chipotle order or whatever. Like eating to discomfort, it does kind of require some attention. Like this is just going to disappear passively. I want to eat all this food, but you know, when I'm bulking up, I get halfway through a meal. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of feeling sort of full. And it takes some actual effort to get down. Oh, you can't even really see the salmon. There we go. Yeah, a little. Thank you. But let me, uh, let me enjoy this meal, and then we can cut to... I mean, it's already, it's close to midday. This might be the last meal before the workout. I guess let's, uh, let's find out. All right. So some time has passed. That two liter of Sprite Zero has disappeared. And the pre-workout meal, uh, I did not record it. It was a little bit impulsive, but not out of reason. So it was... Three dosy dos, straight out of the uh, straight out of the cupboard, which I have been talking against. If I'm if I'm dieting down, you can't be having treats. There's a caveat to that. There is a small caveat to dieting down and including treats, because look, if you're a, I mean, if you can just eat fucking chicken rice every day. And that's all you eat? Badass. You will get lean. I guarantee it. But, you know, I know that when I track the 7 grams of fat 
and the 21 grams of net carbs from those three little cookies, it's just added on to my daily fucking calorie input, man. If my, uh, so in a sense, I would kind of conform out of the idea that a calorie is a calorie when it comes to the actual, like, overarching effect that it's going to have on your body fat percentage, whether you build it or whether you gain it or lose it. You know, now, do not get me wrong. I'm well aware of the glycemic effects of sugars versus slower digesting carbs. And, you know, proteins are not made equal, of course. So there are a few points which I follow. The proteins, I do try to make sure that the uh, my protein sources are from you know, top grade well, sources, you know. And what do you think those are? What's a good source of protein? I think I know what just popped in your head, man. Fucking chicken, eggs, fish, beef, milk. Uh, those are a lot of big ones. But yeah, fucking you know, animal proteins in terms of the complete amino acid array, as well as the benefit of especially red meats, really being full of all sorts of nutrients, you know, egg whites too, salmons, everyone loves throwing around omega-3, it's a classic dieting uh, buzzword, but negating the benefits of like all the micronutrient profiles of certain proteins, which do exist, don't get me wrong, I still want to make sure that my protein sources are from stuff like that. So whenever I, uh, like in that picture of the nutrition profile of those fucking cookies, it said one gram of protein. You know, I'm not so inclined to believe it. When it comes to sources that aren't like real dedicated protein sources, uh, I usually just kind of skip it. I don't really count it. Which I wouldn't necessarily say is a rule you should follow, but that's just how I've gone about it up until now. And it has seemed to work fine. Uh, because if I go over my limit of protein for the day, that does not bother me one bit. This intersection sucks, and this guy totally boned me. But whatever. So I want 250 grams of protein, a, around a gram for however many pounds I weigh, is usually a rule of thumb, which I think is just about right for anybody. You can get away with less, you can get away with more, but I think about a gram, you're, you're not far from the sweet spot. But most of that, I mean, you're going to want it to be fucking complete. You know, when we say BCAAs, branch chain amino acids, those that's not a complete protein. You know, those are specific proteins, specific um, amino acids. You know, I'm, talking, I'm talking leucine, glutamine, um, I don't even remember all of them, but BCAAs, it's not complete. That's not a complete protein. And in foods like a meat or a, a dairy product, or, you know, I'm talking whey, I'm talking, uh, crap. There's whey protein, and then there's, oh yeah, casein. I mean, you know, animal products, meats, beef, muscle, fibers. That's a complete source. You know, it's hitting every scope of the amino acid array. Pretty sure there's like 12 big ones, which you want to hit. And with non-dedicated protein sources like that, at least kind of how, like, they're still protein, but they're not complete. You know, when you get down into, like, soy proteins, and, and I'm not saying this just because it has soy in the name, and that has, like, a fucking, uh like a beta reputation. No, I mean like legit, I'm talking bean proteins, wheats, things that aren't real animal products. They do contain proteins, but if this is the full array, the protein that you're getting from your slice of bread, it's only this chunk, you know? So it's just a bunch of these ones and it's not, you know, totally fucking complete. So my approach, it's always been, I want 250 grams at least of legit protein. I'm not going to repeat the kinds. I just said it a million times. And if I go over from, you know, the protein that was in those low-carb tortillas or 
uh, where and what else. Or in maybe the low-calorie bread that I'm going to eat later if I do. I just, I just don't count it. Now, it's still a calorie because it is protein. Uh, so do that at your own discretion. But what I was getting back to is you know, proteins, I want to make sure are fucking solid sources. Uh, in terms of fats, you know, I take my fish oil. I try to get some animal fats in me as well. I'm talking egg whites. Oh, no, no, no. Egg yolks, you know, ground beef, steaks, stuff like that. You know, make sure you have a reasonable amount of cholesterol floating around. Which, do not be too frightened. Like, I, I don't want to get into it. But, yeah, some animal fats. I will say, I do, whenever I see something and it says there's trans fats in it, and look, I'm not a stick, I'm not a health nut. I'm not a stickler for like, oh, that's an unhealthy food. But trans fats, look, man, there's no argument. <laughs> that is fucking bad for you. So whenever I see that, I will say, all right, get, get this away from me. And then the carbs, you know, if I eat fucking X hundred grams of carbs of oatmeal and rice, or if I eat X hundred grams of carbs of, uh, like, sweets or, like, drinks or, you know, whatever, like cluster dextrin, like liquid carbs, it's still the same amount of energy. But as much as I say there is benefit to getting a little bit sloppy with your diet, you know, having treats, because for the most part, they are easier to get down. For me to eat 100 grams of carbs worth of, like, some kind of candy or, like, a, a bag of fruit snacks, it's really not that much. It's so condensed. It's just one big handful and that's 400 calories. It just disappears. Compared to, you know, maybe some oatmeal or rice, it takes a little bit longer. But don't push it too far. You know, as much as I say you can have some treats now and again, or more like again and again, all sugars, look, I'm not going to say that's good for you. And in a lifting context, really having your blood sugar spike up and down just consistently like that, you're just not going to have a good time. It's going to give you really strong energy fluctuations. And right now that I'm dieting down, I do try to avoid any large source of fucking sugar intake purely for that reason. Because this morning when I had, um, when I had that shake with the protein powder and the oatmeal, as soon as you eat anything, your blood sugar ra your raises. Your blood sugar spikes. You, know, you have an insulin response as well, and then it brings it back down diverts all those nutrients to your muscles and whatever else. Uh, and with that oatmeal, even though it was like 25 grams of carbs, my blood sugar didn't just go like this. It was kind of a smooth transition. So I've got pretty stable energy levels. And you'll hear this anytime anybody goes like carnivore or if someone, you know, does a fast for a few days, uh, the number one thing that I hear these people say is they're like, oh, my energy levels are so stable. And it's because they've got more evenly sparsed out spikes in their blood sugar. So, sure, man. If you do have a milkshake with your steak, those carbs are going to get diverted into your muscles for the insulin, uh, I was about to say insulinogenic, from the insulin response of having sugars in your body. But it's not super fucking maintainable, you know. Even though, you know, you see me drinking all these chocolate milks and whatever else, the majority of my carbs when I'm bulking up, it's not all sweets. You know, there is a pretty solid chunk that's, or not even solid chunk, majority, that's more what you'd call conventional carb sources. Uh, really love potatoes. For me, those just go down super easy. But we're not talking about the bulk right now. We're talking about dieting down. So I've got 250 grams of protein for the day. I've got, I think, 70 grams of fat. I don't remember exactly. And then like 250 grams of carbs, maybe 300. So I forget. I'm not going to pull it up. So I've got that much food in terms of macros for the whole day. So if you've got a yearly budget... You're not just going to blow it all in Q1. You've got to spread it out and make it work for you. So 
having moderately sized meals really does do the trick. If I had like a 2,000 calorie breakfast and then I had to only like scrape up 500 calories for the rest of the day, I'd still be in a deficit. I would still lose body fat because at the end of the day, I only had 2,500 calories. But it would fucking suck because all day I'd be fucking hungry after that one big meal in the morning. So an evenly distributed food intake has always been uh, my sort of approach. And then when you combine that with maybe pushing your first meal a little further in the day, then, you know, let's say you, you, uh, I wouldn't really call myself somebody who does like intermittent fasting, but I can pretty much make it to noon without eating. You know, I'm still drinking a ton of water and stuff and I'm not dying starving. And then I can have a good lunch and kind of start the window of calorie consumption. And by the time I go to bed and I've only had like 2,800 calories, I'm not starving to get up in the kitchen and fucking start chowing down on treats or scooping out ice cream and whatever else. So the point that I was trying to say, I did like a whole roundabout talk just then, was stuff like those fucking cookies, that can fit in your macros. The only problem is, well, the only problem with tracking your macros and trying to stay under a calorie deficit like that is the fact that it does kind of take constant effort on your part because you know every time i grab a treat like that or if i had like a couple chips from the or if i had a little chip bag from the the cupboard or whatever else then i have to look at the nutrition label track it plug it in my phone and you know make sure i don't overeat but it's really not that hard and i mean i don't want to say this like you're going to become ocd about it but now i mean it's just second nature for me to track it but that's just because I put so much emphasis on like the, the end result. So if I wanted to have a slice of pizza after this next workout and I plugged it into my phone and I you know, had 15 grams of fat and 30 grams of carbs, as long as at the end of the day I'm still under that limit, I am going to get leaner. So that's always made the most sense to me. But planning for the lift itself is back. And I don't foresee it taking too long. I mean, just one muscle group and back especially moves kind of quick because whenever I go back and forth between pull downs and rows, even though I could still be kind of breathing heavy, if my lats are really kind of worn out from a set of pull downs, but then I move on to a set of rows where I'm using more mid back, then I'm almost giving my lats a little bit of a break. So by the time I actually get warmed up and start the first working set, I doubt it'll take more than 45 minutes for this workout to be over. And then we can cut to, well, the drive back and whatever I end up eating for the post-workout meal. So let's, uh, let's get amped up to, let's get amped up to pull some shit. All right, pull downs and not as heavy as I could go. The stack goes up to 300, but as much as I like doing a weight where it's like as heavy as I can muster, it's still under the pretense of being able to do a full rep. Like later on in the lift, I might not mind a set of pull downs where I can't really pull it all the way down here because I'm not so worried about a peak contraction. I just kind of want a lot of tension in my lats to just pump them up. But first few sets, as funky as my form gets, I do want them to be at least reasonable for most of the reps in the set but when it breaks down at the end that's fine by me that's just as much as i can fucking do Few more. Yeah. 
Second, do a little rest pause set. Okay with that. I think one more drop set style and then pick something else. Probably a row. So these few reps are gonna be a little nastier because this is a lot of weight. But the purpose of it is just to do a few reps with as much tension on my left as possible and then drop the weight and focus on squeezing. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's just go out there. Let's move on to some kind of row. Oh my goodness. There we go. This machine row is calling my name. It's kind of a bitch to put straps on sometimes, but there we go. Almost. One more. I think that's enough of this machine. But those two are good. Let's do some V-bar rows. I don't typically love this handle, but after a feeler rep, I think this will be a good moderate weight set. Nothing too crazy. <sighs> Okay. Now let's make it drop set. 
That was a good set, but I don't really want to do another one here. I think, I think some single and pullovers are in order. That'll be a good next move. Five reps each side until I burn out to satisfaction. And I mean, fuck dude, my back is already pretty wrecked. If I feel really good after this set, this might be it. And then that would only be like a, well, no, this would be set seven. That's about right. Let's see, let's go by feel. Turn into a superset. Do some one arm pull downs, and this is it. Maybe. A little bit of a uh, longer sort of ending set there, but my lats are fucking fully inflated. They're not going to pop, but they're getting close. Let's go pose down. In the grand scheme of lighting, this is a really good spot. I hate to say it, but I feel like I, some days I might come to this gym specifically just because I like this lighting. But it's pretty hardcore over here too, so super good energy. But let's um let's do it through the shirt lat spread first. Get a little bit of a baseline look at this, the overall width. <laughs> That feels pretty fucking wide. Let's, uh, let's actually get a legit reveal. I feel like I always kind of want my pants as low on my waist as possible. Just to sort of see kind of how my midsection ties into my hips. But I, uh, it's 1037 right now. I looked that first set of back. I started at 1012. So that was only a fucking 25 minute lift, which that doesn't bother me at all, man. My back is wrecked, fully pumped, and now I'm ready to check it out before going home and eating. Whoa. 
Dude, this, <laughs> this lighting just added 10 fucking pounds. And a really good back pump doesn't hurt that situation either. Crazy. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to review the clip, but oh my goodness. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm getting. I'm. I was just talking about how excited I was to start bulking up, but now I'm excited for the rest of the cut. Is even still holding on to some body fat? Obviously not that much, but there is still some. As this starts to peel off me, I mean, midsection is just going to continue to look crazier and fucking crazier. Let's, uh, let's get a little vacuum going here, though. Oh, fucking vacuums are hard, man. Especially at the end of a workout like that. But let's go home and eat. And I don't have to just tell you what I'm going to eat. We'll actually ask. We'll actually get to go see. And at day twenty, after three, well, after nearly three weeks of excruciating pain of dieting. The freak factor has now come into play. Oh my goodness. That back pump was multiple levels, levels, was multiple levels freakier than the one I had only four days ago. So this is what I've been talking about. How once you diet down and you do reach the lower, you know, teens digit body fat, you will notice week to week changes as long as you really are in a calorie deficit because fuck a pound of fat lost when you have like 20 to lose isn't that much but if you only have 10 left to lose then every pound is now a much bigger percentage of a change you know if you uh well you get the gist right if you're uh, if you're 100 pounds overweight and you lose one pound you won't notice but if you've only got like 10 spare pounds of fat on you and you lose one of them, it's going to be, that's a 10% change compared to a 1% change. So if that's you and you're considering dieting down, maybe you bulked up for a while and you're like, oh, you know, I should probably cut. Oh, well, I don't want to lose my strength. I don't want to, I don't want to shrink down when I cut them. I'm not going to be so full. You know what? I'm glad that that's the situation. Because it's a barrier of entry, and it makes being leaner more valuable. Because if you could do it after just two seconds, everybody would be walking around super lean, and it'd be whatever. But actually, now that I say that, that'd probably be pretty cool if everybody was just fucking dice all the time. Okay. I, uh, maybe I redact that statement. I wouldn't mind if it was super easy to get extra lean all the time. But, you know, it makes it more, makes it more fun afterwards, you know? If you get handed something versus, you know, going through a period of time to get it, it's just, we, we get the gist, come on, that's, that's basic shit, that's 101, that's Jake from Adventure Time level speech right there, but, oh, I mean, at this rate, I might not even fucking cut down for more than another month, because I don't have a goal in mind that's like a specific weight, like, I am not thinking, okay, once I hit... Once I get to 235, then I'll be done. No. No, 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 no. What I really want is two things. For one, I want to 
take off some of the body fat that I put on during this previous bulk so that when I bulk up again, I'm not just growing and growing and growing a bigger fucking pool of body fat all over me. Because if I bulked up and then instead of dieting, I just like maintained my weight or maybe just dieted a little, like went back to baseline maintenance calories, I wouldn't have lost any of that body fat that I put on during the bulk. And if I tried to bulk up again, I would just get even fatter because I, I'm ho I hope you're aware the nature of being in a calorie surplus, not all of that extra calories that you're eating are going to just magically be converted to muscle, as cool as that would be. There's kind of a, it's kind of a gradient, you know, like as you eat more and more and more, though you will put yourself in a better position to gain muscle uh, to an extent. There's obviously diminishing returns there. But the more you're eating and the harder you're bulking, you will deposit some body fat. Now, you can counteract that. You can counteract some of that extra body fat gain by doing your daily 30 minutes of cardio, which I am... I mean, fuck. Who says to do your cardio more than me? And I don't say it for no reason. You know, I'm not just saying it because, well, oh, cardio is good for you. It's going to make you leaner year-round. You're going to be able to eat more food. You're just going to have a better time training. I've, I've said this a million times. I don't know. I don't want to repeat the same speech. But, like, that's just the nature of it. So, oh, man. Yeah. As excited as I am to get bulked up, now I'm getting really excited to cut down. Not that I'm, I mean, of course I'm excited to cut down. But, yeah. Starting now it's going to get extra fun. Like I just said, how the beginning of a diet kind of sucks before you start to really see yourself get extra lean. I think I'm finally past that. Uh, I'm finally past that point of, let's just call it uncomfortability. You know, Cause I don't, I don't think that I have that bad of body dysmorphia. Like if I woke up one day and I was magically out of shape, um, you know, like Shrek three, witch style, like I got a curse or something, I'd probably feel like shit for sure. But even having what I would probably think of as a reasonably level head about how I look, like it doesn't fuck with me too much. Uh, I'm the one who's the most hypersensitive to seeing any minute changes in my build. You know, when I look at these fucking extra fancy 4K videos on the computer and stuff, like I notice every little fucking detail. So... Those first, that first week of dieting down, you don't think I didn't notice that my pumps were shrinking? But, like I said, don't let that fucking stop you. There's, there's, uh, there's leanness waiting for you. There's striations and veins, the likes of which you could never even imagine on yourself at the end of a consistent and disciplined calorie deficit. Emphasis on consistent. So, so far I've had about 1,200 calories. Now I get to go home and, I mean, dude, it's so late. I get to have probably a really big meal and just fucking pass out. Actually, no, I got, uh, I've got two meals left. I don't know. I woke up really late today. This is a bad day schedule. But my, uh, we had a Costco trip today. Or I did, my parents did. And they brought back a ton of top round steak, which... If you don't know what you're looking for, steak-wise, dieting down, top round is the best. That is my go-to. This flank is still decently lean, but it's pretty tough. And I don't want to sit here and like really marinate it or like put a meat tenderizer through it so I can get it more tender and easy to eat. But top round, lean-ass cut, reasonably soft, like it's, you know, it's no fucking filet. But, super good. What I really need to do is get my sous vide going. That'll be a separate full day of eating video. I'll, I'll get into that. But, if you've been, if you, if you like cooking steaks, <clears throat> and you haven't tried sous vide one before, for 100 bucks for a sous vide machine, and you've never tried it, you're in for a treat can't speak highly enough about that method. Okay, now I want to do a little sous vide fucking tangent. 
you take your steak, season it, throw it in a Ziploc bag and kind of suck the air out of it. You can get a really fancy like vacuum sealer, which probably lets your seasoning seep into it a little bit more. But I've had, I've had no problem just to fucking Ziploc and do it like the little, like suck the air out of nothing. Throw it in a fucking big ass pot. Set it to 130 or 125 around there. Leave it for fucking five hours. Take it out of the bag, dry it off. One minute on a high heat avocado oil skillet. I guarantee you'll never go back. Uh, but yeah, so they got a bunch of those top round steaks that I like. So I, I'm, I get to be kind of spoiled. They, uh, they cooked like two pounds worth for me. So I'll probably only go through, I'll do about 10-ish ounces. No, not 10. I got to look up the exact macros again. Another key point, dieting-wise, if you don't really know what you're looking for in terms of like, well, how do I know how many grams of protein are in three ounces of steak? You got to look up calorie king. And then, uh, well, just look up top round steak. Or you can look up avocado, or you can look up lean turkey breast. You can look up any fucking food under the sun. And if you don't know what the macros are, just type in that food, space, calorie king, and the fucker will tell you. It's like this, uh, it's been a lifesaver for me. So, you know, you've got, you plug in like sirloin or ribeye or any kind of, any kind of whatever, and throw it on your food scale, which you should have in your kitchen. And you should be using all the time. And let's say I've got eight ounces of uncooked top round or you know turkey or whatever, anything. Plug in that weight into the little uh, you know weight input, and it'll plug out the macros straight for you. And one thing which does make me feel a little bit better about being kind of a you know track every macro that you eat advocate is the longer that you do it, you will get a sense for it. To the point where, I mean, I kind of, I make this, I make this reference all the time, but once you've tracked your macros enough, you can get a really close estimation of just how many grams of fats, carbs, and proteins that you're eating at any given, I mean, in any given meal. Like I could be at a fucking Thanksgiving dinner or a buffet, get a big ass plate of shit, and just looking at it. I can, uh, you know, I can activate my sixth sense, and no longer do I just see this much mac and cheese, this much ground beef, whatever. I can see it a little bit deeper and say, oh, that's probably about 40 grams of carbs. Uh, yeah, probably about, yeah, 20 grams of fat for sure. Yeah, that's about 40 grams of ground beef worth, probably about 10 grams of fat as well. Oh, I just, I, I got a big glass of, uh, Big glass of juice with it, too. That's got to be 50 grams of carbs. And though it may not be 100% accurate, you get pretty close, you know? Like, within, within 10 fucking percent, for sure. So, the longer you do it, you don't have to actually weigh everything out. Uh, if you go to Costco, you can get these massive pre-cooked turkey breasts. Like, I'm not talking about a ground like deli turkey where it's full of like the feet and the beaks where they grind it up. Like this is a big ass just hunk of meat. And you get to a point where I would take it out of its like sealed bag, put it in a Ziploc, and I could cut off a slice that would be eight ounces on the dot just because I had done it so long and I kind of got a, the idea, the visual for it. So, you know, stuff like that, just by repetitive action, you do get better at things and you'll kind of optimize your routine. So now instead of every time I eat something, I have to like look up the macros in it or, you know, I have to weigh it out every time. If I'm kind of in a pinch, like I'd probably prefer to weigh it. If I have a scale with me and I'm at my home kitchen or whatever, that's probably what I'm going to do just to make sure I get it like 100% accurate. But if you kind of have to estimate, once you've done it for long enough, it's pretty much about right. But that's... uh. Just a little trick of the trade the longer you do it. So, I guess that kind of brings up the question, which is not rhetorical. Is that good? Is that a good thing for you specifically to look at your foods and have a, have kind of a second 
relationship with them, where instead of looking at it as just like a tree that you enjoy, like, oh, I love eating this, this, or that, like, you can actually see it in a different light where you're, like, more objective. Like, okay, that, that's about 15 grams of fat, uh, five whole eggs, it's 30 grams of protein, 25 grams of, like, is that something that you want to do? And I think it sounds bad. It sounds like you're fucking OCD. I mean, really, if, if someone were to tell me, like, yeah, that's, or if somebody told you, like, yeah, that's Sam, he, uh, uh, well, every time he eats something, he puts it on the scale, and he has to track it in his phone, and, you know, he, he makes sure he eats the same amount of food per day. Uh, like, like, when you say it like that, I, I guess I see your argument. But, uh, fuck, man, I really do think that that's the way to do it. Even if you're just a random dude running around, not even being a crazy lifter, just, you know, getting a gist for what you're eating and how it is actually going to react to your body. And I'm not even talking about like a really specialized, like, okay, if I eat 50 grams of, if I eat 50 grams of, uh, of this oatmeal, it's going to spike my blood sugar to 150 nanograms per deciliter or blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't mean anything that fancy, but Getting past the baseline understanding of food, like just stupid kind of um, uh, just dumb rhetoric, like bread makes you fat, uh, like that's that's just considered a baseline fucking fact. Like, oh, if you eat bread, you're gonna get fat. Oh, don't um, ah, fuck, what's another one? That's probably the main one I ever hear. Eating bread makes you fat. Uh, what else? else? Eating healthy foods will make you lose weight. And only and eating unhealthy foods makes you gain weight. Like, not really getting a grasp of the fact that calories are the only thing that are really discerning that change in your body. Like, and anybody that gets it, gets it. If you're really into tracking your macros, you understand this shit. And you get, okay, if I fucking, if I feed my dog two scoops of kibble every meal instead of one i'm probably going to make him become overweight so okay i guess i gotta give him just one scoop in a and like this sucks too because when i say it like this it doesn't sound very convincing or cool but it's like eating like a dog in the sense of like understanding like okay don't feed him too much just give him enough you know he's (laughs) i don't think there's a situation where your dog should be bulking so for something like that you want your dog to stay a good, healthy weight, have him running around, give him the same amount of food per day. I don't see why the same thing shouldn't apply to you, man. At the end of this whole process of growing, which I'm, you know, fucking uh, waist deep in right now in water, like I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. At the end of this process, there's going to be a period of time where I'm just maintaining a pretty beefy weight. I'm not going to be bulking up, and I'm not going to be cutting down. I'm just going to be staying a pretty big, you know, lean weight. It'll be my new walk around weight with hopefully 500 pounds of lean tissue and veins out the wazoo. But once I get to that state, I'm still going to track my macros, even though I'm not manually bulking up or trying to cut down to be leaner, just you know, to make sure I'm eating the same amount of food per day. And as much as people love, like, oh, you, you need to eat so and so and get your micronutrients from your, you can't just take vitamins, like these little. These little things, I do totally agree, they are going to have a big effect on your body. But no specific sort of dieting trick will ever come close to having as big of an effect on your build as your calorie intake. And honestly, no amount of training will either. There is no way that anyone could ever get to 250 pounds eating only 2,000 calories per day. No matter how much gear or food or perfectly scientifically studied training, it's a physical impossibility. So the big three fucking lift and sleep and eating, that eating part is honestly probably the most important for making gains long term. So as much as I love talking about how I'm trying to optimize my training and you know, I wanna I wanna stimulate the muscle but not overwork it and you know, I want to hit it in different ways, so it's, like, that is I that is definitely worth thinking about. That's why I do so much, because I want to you know, get better at working out, better at training. 
grow. But none of that will give me any results if I don't eat enough food to put myself in a surplus to actually be in a state to grow. So I don't think that's just a me problem. 99% of people who say, oh, dude, I fucking, I, I'm plateaued. I can't grow anymore. I'm just, maybe I got to change my split. I sh maybe I should switch to Mike Mentor style or I should do more volume or I should whatever. Look, you are going to grow muscle doing a ton of different styles of training. Be it like if you wanted to come into the gym and only do five sets per muscle group, two times a week, or maybe you wanted to do 10 sets one time a week. I'm not, I'm not saying you should do either one of those specifically, but you could do very different training styles. And as long as you eat enough food to be in a bulk, you are going to gain muscle, I guarantee it. So that is the, that is the first barrier of entry to growth, is just eating enough food to actually induce it, which I think is kind of an unfortunate state of uh, people's thought processes because I think if you were to ask somebody what the most important thing is to growing muscle they probably would not say eating enough food you know it's probably up there they'd probably think about it but I think the first thing people would say would be like oh you know eat your protein you know make sure you go to the gym um, you know make sure you do progressive overload it's like and I'm not 100% sure this is the case with everyone but just kind of from hearing people talk and, uh, you know, a combination of actually talking to people or just eavesdropping in the gym, that's all I ever hear. All I hear is like, oh, dude, I'm working on my bench. I'm trying to break through. Uh, I'm trying to get 225. I'm at 200 right now. Better keep pushing it. It's like if you probably, if you had a week of a calorie surplus, a real one, your bench would probably go up to 225. I mean, it's the number one, number one cause of growth. It's not the training, it's the eating. So if I can telepathically imprint that on lifters around the world, I think 200 pounder, I think the term 200 pounder wouldn't even exist because everybody would already be up there. That, two, that 200 pound joke would probably be like 225 or you know, whatever else. But that's... Uh, if you take anything from from this video, because this is kind of diet specific, it's if you want to grow, you need to eat more calories. Now train hard, train smart, get your rest and recovery. But if you want to grow, eating more calories will do that for you. And if you want to get leaner, then you have to eat less calories. No other change that you can do to your lifestyle or your training will come close to the effects that actually doing that will have. Anybody that really bulks and cuts, they don't need me to tell that tell uh, tell that to them either, because they get it. So that's enough. That's enough of that. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's go cut to the post workout meal. You know, I'm not really doing an awesome job. And making it look like I'm dieting down and getting leaner. But honestly, I think that's kind of a positive. You know, you got to think, even getting past like the kind of subjective like enjoyment of whatever you're doing. If you don't, if you can't eat foods that you at least decently can stomach, you're not going to have any fun. So I almost feel like I'm kind of, <laughs> I wouldn't say a bad example. But I might make it look a little easier than it is. Because this is fucking nine ounces of steak and then a pack of instant ramen. But in the context of like the actual calories, you know, about 70 grams of protein, 20 of fat, 60 of carbs, and then another 20 of fat. So this is kind of a big hit. This is 40 grams of fat all at once. So usually I'd probably want to spread that out throughout the day. But I was kind of sparse. So saving calories for later... That's always going to be an easier move than having like a big breakfast and then having to shrink your meals down before bed. Because if before, if this was my last meal and I didn't have any room calorie wise for a thing of ramen and I had to eat like only four ounces of steak, I'm sure I'd eat it, lay down in bed, 
And I guess depending on how tough I am, I'd either go to sleep and deal with it or get up and say, I'm fucking hungry. Have a treat, you know? And nobody's watching. So don't worry. Or actually do worry. Because I know that if you're trying to diet down and you get up at night and you have a few scoops of ice cream, that feeling that somebody's watching you, that's me. Because I know you're cheating. But you can make it easier on yourself by kind of at least trying to spread your calories out evenly throughout the day. But this puts me at, um, well, let's, let's actually just see. So 2050, I've got 70 more grams of protein left. And then I've actually overshot my fat goal. Uh, I was only supposed to eat 70, and this is going to put me at 88. But I'm not freaking because I can just kind of reduce the amount of carbs that I eat. You know, I want to do mainly carbs. Like, I wouldn't want to have the rest of my energy just from fats. Like, I still want to have a decent amount of carb intake. But if I go over and kind of have more of a fat-heavy day, then if I have an extra, you know, 500 or 200 calories of fat for the day, then I would just subtract that many calories from the carbs. Because it's not so important that I hit a specific number for either one. It's however much energy and calories I'm getting from both of them combined. So that leaves me with about... Well, actually, let's just look. Oh, shit. That's like 700 more calories. It's really... I'm going to have about this much steak again in like, honestly, probably like an hour. Usually I'd spread them out, but it's getting kind of late. I want to get to bed at a reasonable time. But I'll probably have the other steak that they uh, that I had graciously cooked for me. And then that's going to put me at like... So then I, got, I'm a, I could literally have this exact meal again. Actually, I probably will. So... <laughs> I guess let's cut to the future where I'm eating the exact same thing. But at the end of this, I should still be at... Actually, not even should. I'm going to be under my calorie deficit, and I can go to bed a happy camper. Well, let's, uh, let me just enjoy this in peace, and then we can cut to that. Which may change. Instead of the ramen, maybe I'll have like a, like a popsicle or something. As long as it's within the calorie limit. final calorie count for the day with the addition of this six ounces of top round cooked weight one cup of lemonade one scoop of protein powder and the four fish oil tablets which fish oil it's fats you know they've even on your multivitamins and your fucking fish oil you can't escape looking at the macros We've got a small guest, but final calorie count for the day adds up to 2,682. Get out of here. So 2,682, 2,700 ish. I can't, I have my limit set at 3000 because I'm not trying to, well, I, when I was a little bit lighter, I would drop my calories down to 2,500 to diet down. But as you get bigger, when you have more muscle on your frame, not even just being more active, but having to keep all this muscle oxygenated from breathing and moving around and everything, it just, it just takes more energy. So this diet, I've kind of set the upper limit at 3,000. But in a dieting context, if you have a day where you're under, it's not really going to hurt you. you know, if I had a day where I ate like nothing, the next day I'd probably rebound and eat extra, which that would be pushing it. But if you're a few hundred calories shy, like let's say it's, I mean, right now it's fucking one o'clock. If I was to see like, oh, I've got 300 calories left and, you know, eat it just because I have 300 left, I don't think it's really necessary. So if you're ever under your calorie goal, which usually is kind of rare, fuck man, just go to sleep and enjoy it. That's an extra 300 calories worth of deficit which is about like a tenth of a pound of fat. Because one pound of body fat in your body, you know, all this little, any pudge that you got on you, one pound of it is about the equivalent of, of I think, 3,000, 3,300 3, calories. 
So for me to stop at 2,700 instead of 3,000, that means that today I will have lost an extra 0.1 pound of body fat ish, you know, not like it's not that direct, but it, it kind of is that direct. So that along with the nice cup of fucking NAC and fish oil and multivitamins and biotin and everything else under the sun. I'll probably just take this now so I don't have to deal with it after I eat. Mm. You know, one thing that I notice, and this may be a little bit TMI. Actually, no, it totally is, but I'll say it anyway. Whenever I'm bulking up, I can tell that I have a much harder time taking my vitamins at the end of the day than I do when I'm dieted. Like just then, that was a full fucking mouthful of everything. And with just one sip, swallowed down like nothing. But when I'm fully bulked and I try to do the vitamins, it literally fucking triggers me. Like, so I've got a little bit of a story to tell, not necessarily one I'm proud of. But it was post-workout, late as, late as all heck. I think it was like 2 a.m. I just finished pounding. I was doing the dextro shake at the time. So 100 grams of carbs, 50 grams of protein, and just one like 16-ounce shaker. Or maybe it was a 20-ounce. But I had just slammed that, which is already kind of an unpleasant experience because it's a big shake of just like sugary. Like, but I just finished drinking that. My stomach's already upset. I come into the kitchen, try to slam a whole mouthful of vitamins like that just to be done with it so I could go to bed. And at halfway, like just halfway down, like, like half of them come back up and I need to drink some more water. And I'm sitting there for like a minute, hovering over the sink, just trying to compose myself. Because I've, look, long story short, that full shake got blown into the sink. And I had to make another one to make up for it. So, uh, word of the wise, if you can tell you're kind of pushing yourself food wise, maybe do one multivitamin at a time or spread them out throughout the day instead of, uh, you know, triggering your vom reflex. But honestly, I don't even think that that's not the vitamins fault. That's just because that's a, uh, <laughs> that's just a nasty fucking shake, but 255 grams of protein, 110 grams of fat and 168 grams grams of carbs. So my carbs would have been a little bit higher if I had less fats, you know, because my goal was only 70 grams of fat. So I could have had an extra 80 grams of carbs. Because I'm not sure if you know this or not, but a gram of protein has four calories, a gram of carbs has four calories, and a gram of fat has nine calories. So, you know, that's uh that's just something to take into consideration. That's sort of another reason why I don't mind having higher carbs when I'm dieting down. Because I can physically eat more grams of food in carbs and still be about at the same calorie limit. You know, because if I'm holding 500 grams of carbs or like 100 grams of carbs versus 100 grams of fat of whatever variety that could be in, in terms of food, this is 900 calories. This is only 400, even though they weigh the exact fucking same. That's uh, that sounds kind of silly. It's like the feathers and steel sort of thing, but whatever. So that's a good day to me. As soon as I sit down, make this steak disappear. And the only reason I'm adding the protein shake in is because th these, this six ounces of steak only added up to 230 grams of protein for my daily, like for the whole day. So I just added a scoop of a uh, fucking chocolate ISO H1 to um, just kind of bump it up. Not that I think it would really matter. I mean, when I say a gram of protein per pound of body weight, it's not like that's a cut and dry number. Like if you eat less, you're not gonna grow. And if you eat more, your kidneys are gonna explode. No, but that is something I can, like a lot of this stuff is, you know, things that have worked for me and I've kind of uncovered that by trying different things. But there are a few things which I say where I'll kind of add a little bit of a, a disclaimer where I'm like, okay, this is actually something I would recommend for the general populace. 
and a gram per pound of body weight, per pound of lean body weight, is about right. I can say that with with reasonably certain, or with a reasonable certainty that I'm not going to give anybody bad advice. So, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this. And then just, what was this, day number 20, diet-wise? At this rate, I really don't think I'm going to see day 60. But we'll have to see. Because, you know, it's not like I'm itching to put on body fat. But I do want to get back into an actual growth state. But I think I just have to kind of curb my enthusiasm for being huge and bulked up and get a little bit more excited about being super veiny and vascular and fucking freaky and shredded, which is cool. But in my mind, I almost feel like when I diet down, I'm like pausing my progress because I'm not growing. All of these workouts that I'm doing for this entire dieting phase, I am not growing any new muscle. All I'm doing is maintaining the muscle that I've already built and then slowly peeling off the fat layer that surrounds me. So in a way, I think it's probably just because I'm such a meathead and I think not growing muscle equals bad. But, I, you know, I do kind of think that. So I, uh, I almost use the analogy that, like, the dining phase is where I turn around and I look at the view. And the bulking phase is when I turn back towards the mountain and start actually climbing and getting higher up. But the steak combined with some TikToks, I'm sure I'll have some sweet lifter dreams tonight. But I, I don't know if I'd say this is a, well, no, this is pretty much a typical fucking dieting day. I didn't do as many of my dieting hack foods as I usually do. Uh, I guess I'll save that for next time. But usually, kind of midday, I would bust out some like low carb tortillas with some low fat peanut butter mixed with like zero fat or with zero carb maple syrup. So it's kind of just like a sweet dip that's mainly just carbs and protein, as well as all the fiber from the low carb tortillas. Or, oh yeah, I didn't even do my omelet. Yeah. I'll make sure that the next full day of eating, I actually run through some of my specifically diet friendly foods because today was more so just eating in a diet friendly way uh, because I did kind of wait till later in the day to start you know really chowing down and having my meals so that does make it a little bit easier to stay in a deficit but regardless of what kind of time frame or meal sizes or frequencies that you want to do I am not joking when I say that your calorie intake is the number one factor stopping you from either losing body fat or gaining size. So if you're going to do anything this year, lifting wise, or, you know, make some kind of change in terms of your, you know, muscle growth, fuck man, even if you're a power lifter, a surplus is going to do you good. If you're going to make any change soon and really kind of, I'm not even talking like optimizing your diet, like a fucking Olympic athlete. But I just mean getting a little bit more knowledgeable about what you're eating, how it's going to affect you, maybe eating specific foods at certain times instead of just, you know, eating randomly. Because there is an allure to not giving a fuck. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's like some dudes just want to come to the gym, work hard, and just, you know, eat what they want. And like, that's, that's just their, their shit. That's their prerogative. But if you know, like, yeah... I, I, do, I think I do want to take this lifting thing a little more seriously. I do want to put a little more energy into it, try to see some more results. Like, I'm not really, like, I've been working out hard and for a long time, but I'm not really satisfied with where I'm at right now. You know, I think I could be doing more. Diet improvement, if, especially if you're kind of just eating whatever, or maybe like having a protein shake now and again, in, you know, making moves diet-wise especially if that's you and you haven't really gotten into track and everything, the correlation between the results that you're going to get is going to be fucking direct. You know, with a lot of minute changes to your training, like it's going to take a while to see benefits or, you know, whatever else. But if you haven't really optimized your diet and you start to, you know, you start to consistently eat your gram of protein per pound of body weight, you know, you hit the, sim the same amount of carbs per day, you make sure you have a certain amount before you work out, 
the hydration too, making sure that you're drinking at least fucking two liters of water a day or more. More will never hurt you water-wise. You are going to feel it in the gym. Because, I mean, you got to think, that's the fucking fuel you're running on. If, if you put, I, one of the, I forget, what are the numbers? 80, whatever. If you put unleaded in a fancy fucking car, that shit's not going to work, right? So if you get the kind of fancier gas that it's made for, it's going to run better. And I know that's not the same analogy because it's a fucking car, but I'm not joking when I say that that's, that's a good mindset to have food-wise. So more to come. I know I've been getting kind of, uh, I know these have been getting kind of consistent. I always just drive, lift, pose, drive back. But you got to remember, that's kind of all there is, you know? Like, if, 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 I'll make them if you want a ton of f full day of eating videos. Don't worry, man. I'll make them. Because these are for you to watch. But, yeah, don't forget, this is kind of a... This is a lot of the same thing over and over and over again. But, yeah. At least for this next few weeks, I will be making uh, pretty noticeable changes. Especially week to week. You know, visually. So by the end of it, oh my goodness, I'm sure I'm just going <laughs> to, once I get extra lean, I'll probably just do some posing in the morning when I wake up, even secondary to the, the pump posing, just because, uh, just so I can have a bunch of pictures and videos to look back on later on in the future. But that's all I got. Last meal, 2,700 calories, basically. That's a deficit if I've ever seen one. So I will see you tomorrow. For arms, and I think I want to do forearms too. So it'll be a little bit of a longer one. But I'll see you then.